Stacy had to appear in court after a trial period for her adoption. She had lived with her new foster parents for about three months. Stacy was glad that she finally could come to court. This was finally the time to get everything off her chest. The judge was very reserved. The parents acted like they were the perfect match for Stacy and hoped Stacy would not open her mouth. But out of nowhere, and to everyone's surprise, Stacy decided to speak up and interrupt the judge. This could not be good. The break was over, and the judge ordered everyone to return to the courtroom. Stacy sighed and followed her caseworker quietly back to their seats. But not before giving her foster parents one final confident look to make them even more nervous. They had no idea what Stacy was about to do. Stacy's caseworker noticed her piercingly looking at her foster parents and tugged on Stacy's arm. What is that look? Don't do something you'll regret later, Stacy. This is a lovely family. You don't want to screw this up. But her caseworker had no idea what was going on behind closed doors. The judge started the trial and was in the middle of a sentence when Stacy suddenly stood up and interrupted him. I have something to say, and it's very important. The judge was astonished by this rude interruption, but let Stacy speak. This isn't the lovely family everyone seemed to believe. But what was the secret that would let to the arrest of her foster father? Somewhere in New York lived a young girl named Stacy. Stacy had a difficult childhood, bouncing from foster place to foster place. She longed for a permanent place to call home and a family to call her own. But despite her hope, the foster homes she was placed in were never quite what she had envisioned. She had been to different foster homes, but never stayed more than a few weeks. She felt very alone and had very few friends. Just one girl named Mia and Stacy's caseworker, Jim, were the only steady things in her life. She knew whatever happened, she could always rely on them. Stacy's caseworker, Jim, had watched Stacy bounce from house to house. She always tried to do her best, but it just never seemed to work. Finally, there were only a few foster families left, and the Berkling family was one of them. Before we continue, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and click the notification bell for more amazing stories. Jim really thought that family would be the one. It's not always as it seems. One day, Stacy was placed in yet another foster home, but this one was different from the others. The Berkling family seemed perfect at first glance, with two loving foster parents, a foster brother, and a comfortable home. But as time passed, Stacy began to notice strange things about her foster father. Her foster father's strange behavior was the first sign to Stacy that there was something wrong with this family. She did a little digging and unraveled a big, scary secret. There was something very wrong about this family, and no one from the outside had any idea. Not until Stacy decided it was enough, at least. At first, Stacy didn't know what to do. She was scared to speak up, but she also knew she didn't want to stay with this family forever. Luckily for Stacy, her trial period was coming to an end, and she knew they all had to go to court very soon. There, she would reveal his secret. All Stacy had to do was push through for a couple more days, but it was harder than she thought. Her foster brother gave her a hard time and would often pick on her, and her foster mother wasn't as kind as she portrayed to be too. But Stacy's suffering would soon come to an end. The day of the court hearing was filled with tension for Stacy. She woke up early, her stomach churning with nerves as she got dressed and prepared for the day ahead. She knew that this hearing would decide her fate, and she was both scared and determined to make sure that the truth was heard. She and her foster family had to go to court separately, so Stacy got picked up early by her caseworker. Jim could sense Stacy's nervousness, but didn't say anything. He knew how gut-wrenching times like these were for kids, so he wanted to make the ride as calm as possible. As she arrived at the court, she could feel her heart pounding in her chest. 
She walked into the courtroom on her own and saw her foster parents sitting at the front, looking confident and self-assured. Stacy's eyes darted around the room, taking in the judge, the lawyers, and the other people present. She felt a wave of anxiety wash over her, but she pushed it aside and reminded herself why she was there. She had to fight for her future and had to be strong. She didn't want to speak up just for herself. She wanted these people off the foster care system so no other child would be placed with them ever again. The hearing began, and Stacy's foster parents spoke first, praising their parenting skills and how much they loved and cared for Stacy. They even showed pictures of the family together and a video of them doing fun activities, trying to persuade the judge that they were the perfect family for her. Stacy listened in silence, her heart pounding with a mix of fear and anger. She knew that they weren't the loving family they claimed to be and hoped the judge would see through their lies. But as the trial continued, it became clear to Stacy that the judge was blindsided by their behavior. There wasn't much Stacy could do in this situation. Even though she wasn't raised right, like any other decent girl, she knew you shouldn't interrupt someone as they were speaking. So, she had to think about something else to do. Something that would make them pause the trail, if only for a few minutes. So, Stacy did what she knew best, act. She always had to act kind and nice around families. She didn't even know. So how hard could it be to act like you were getting sick? Stacy began by putting her hand on her stomach and frowning at the judge. She then began to breathe heavier and heavier. During the short break, everyone had to wait in the hall. And when Stacy's parents thought no one was looking, they headed over to Stacy to give her some advice. I know what you're doing, but it won't work, her foster mother said. You will come and live with us, even if you don't want to. But Stacy had something else in mind. She hadn't told her foster parents yet that she knew about their secrets. But now that they were trying to intimidate her, Stacy responded with a well-thought-out response. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. You never know what I might say. This was just vague enough to keep her foster parents on edge for the rest of the trial, and that was just how Stacy wanted them. All she needed was one slip up in front of the judge, and her story would become more believable. Because Stacy knew damn well she wouldn't be taken seriously otherwise. Stacy's caseworker walked over to Stacy as her foster parents walked away and asked what that was about. Oh, nothing, Stacy said, but Jim could see there was more to it. Don't do something you'll regret later, Stacy. This is a lovely family. You don't want to screw this up. Stacy wanted to make a snarky remark, but just as she opened her mouth, someone called for the trial to continue. So, Stacy sighed and followed her caseworker quietly back to their seats, but not before giving her foster parents one final confident look to make them even more nervous. And her tactic worked. Stacy's parents seemed to have lost their confidence and now looked more on edge than before. This gave Stacy the confidence boost she needed. She would wait for the perfect moment to interrupt the judge and tell the truth about what really goes on in that family. Stacy's caseworker noticed her piercingly looking at her foster parents and tugged on Stacy's arm. What is that look? Don't do something you'll regret later, Stacy. This is a lovely family. You don't want to screw this up. But her counselor had no idea what was going on behind closed doors. The judge proceeded with the trial, and they discussed a lot of things that Stacy didn't understand. Stacy's caseworker kept a close eye on Stacy because he suspected that she was about to do something stupid. But that didn't stop Stacy. She knew she would never forgive herself if she wouldn't speak up. The judge was in the middle of a sentence when Stacy suddenly stood up. Her caseworker tried to get her to sit down, but she refused. I have something to say, and it's very important. The judge was astonished by this rude interruption, but let Stacy speak. This isn't the lovely family everyone seemed to believe. Courtroom fell silent as the judge looked at Stacy with surprise and concern. He paused for a few seconds, 
and Stacy could see him thinking about the situation. She knew there were two possible outcomes. He would either let her speak or tell her to sit back down and ignore her. The suspense was killing Stacy, and she could feel all eyes on her. Had she made a mistake by saying this so out in the open? But then the judge finally spoke, but his response wasn't as Stacy expected. Walk with me, the judge said as he stood up. Trail is adjourned until our return. Stacy and her caseworker followed the judge to a little room in the back. The judge closed all the blinds and sat them down on a table in the middle. He looked at Stacy with a very serious look and said, that was a very serious allegation. But Stacy knew she could say nothing else but the truth. I wouldn't lie to you, she replied. I'll be in serious danger if I were to stay with that family. The judge looked even more surprised by her remark. Danger, he asked. Why would you say that? The judge was clearly interested in hearing her story. Do you promise to believe me? She asked the judge. The judge looked at Jim and back at Stacy. I can't promise that. I'll have to start an investigation based on the details you're about to tell me. Stacy sighed. She knew deep down this wouldn't be easy. But everything got very serious, very fast. Stacy looked down at the table. Can I talk alone with Jim first? She asked while fidgeting with her fingers. Yes, of course. I'll wait outside, the judge said. He seemed very understanding of Stacy's situation. The judge left the room, and Stacy turned to Jim. What is it, Stacy? He said, with a concerned look on his face. Stacy hesitated, but eventually told Jim about her suspicions. Jim was confused and couldn't believe what Stacy had told him. Are you 100% sure? He asked her. I just can't believe this would happen in a foster family. They must undergo multiple checks to be accepted as a foster family. I'm telling the truth, Stacy said. She was getting more and more impatient, and having adults not believe her was also very frustrating. Finally, filled with anger, Stacy stood up and ran out of the room. She ran straight past the judge, who tried calling for her to get back, but ignored him. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she ran through the street. I will get them to believe me, she thought. All I need is proof. And she knew just the place to find it. She hurried home, which was about two or three blocks, and burst through the door, scaring her foster brother, who stayed behind. What are you doing here? Her foster brother exclaimed. Don't worry about it, Stacy said. This will be the last time you will see me ever going into this house. She rushed up the stairs and into her foster parents' room. She knew just where to look and quickly found the evidence she needed. She ran down the stairs, back out the door, and back to the courtroom. Her heart was beating so fast, Stacy feared it would jump out of her chest. Everyone looked at Stacy as she frantically ran back. It wasn't very usual to see a little girl run on her own in a busy New York. When she arrived at the courtroom, she was stopped by the guards. What are you doing here, little girl? They asked her. I have a court hearing, Stacy answered confidently. She tugged her arm from the guard's grip and ran past him. She could hear him yelling, but she was too fast. Stacy ran to the same courtroom she had to go to this morning and burst through the door. The judge was just telling everyone about Stacy's disappearance and was shocked to see Stacy had returned. Stacy's forehead dripped with sweat, and she had to catch her breath before she could speak again. Jim ran to her aid and helped her back to her seat. I, I have the evidence, Stacy panted. What? Jim answered. I have the evidence, Stacy said again, now loud enough for everyone to hear. Stacy's foster parents shot up from their seats and looked at Stacy with pale faces. Stacy, darling, her foster mother said. What do you mean? Didn't you like your time with us? I thought you enjoyed going on trips with us and having your own room. But Stacy only had eyes for the judge. All right, Stacy, 
he said. Let's go back to the room. No, Stacy answered. I want everyone to hear. Stacy stood up from her seat and adjusted her posture. She looked at her foster parents and gave them one last confident look. She then turned her gaze to the judge and began telling her story. This isn't the lovely family everyone seemed to believe, and I will tell you why. When I first came to this family, I, too, was blindsided by their kindness. They seemed to really like me and gave me a feeling of security. But that feeling soon faded when I started noticing some strange behavior from my foster father. He acts like an innocent man, but looks can be deceiving. That man is a bank robber, Stacy said. She could hear people gasping and looked at the judge for his response, but his facial expressions gave nothing away. That is a serious allegation, Stacy, the judge reacted. You said you had proof? Show it to me. Stacy walked up to the judge and pulled something from her pocket. It was a crumbled up $100 bill. She handed over the money to the judge and said, This is from one of his big black bags full of money. The judge took the money and gave it to an officer. He mumbled, something Stacy couldn't hear, and then turned to face Stacy's foster father directly. Arrest this man, the judge ordered. Stacy's foster father tried to talk himself out of it, but the judge was certain. He knew it was a bold move without any proven evidence, but he trusted Stacy for some kind of reason. Stacy watched with a big smile on her face as her foster father was escorted out of the building. What will happen to him? She asked. He will be interrogated, and they will test the money for fingerprints and scan the number to see from which bank it came. The judge answered, But if you turn out to be wrong, they will let him go, and I will get into big trouble. Stacy's caseworker suggested she could stay with him for the night until they figured out what to do next. Stacy didn't mind. She was just happy she would never go back to that family again. The police investigated Stacy's allegations, and it turned out she was right. But that wasn't all. He turned out to be not just any bank robber. Her used-to-be foster father was part of a notorious criminal group. He was brought to justice, and his family was banned from ever fostering again. Stacy was placed with a new family and finally found her forever home. The End Binding bonds through beautiful tales. Thank you for watching.